All right, hello there, fellow coder. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I think it's an extremely important message that I need to get out to you right now. So let me tell you why this message is so important and why this is not just, you know, hyperbole. Um, I've been teaching people how to code for over eight years. In that journey, I've had more than 4,000 customers, but these are more than 4,000 people who have raised their hand and say, yes, Trevor, I want your help. Please teach me how to code. Okay, I've gone through this process with 4,000, more than 4,000 programmers. So the, what, where this is coming from, this, it, this uh, topic that I'm about to cover today in this video, um, this isn't just for like one or two people, okay? This is a, um, a concept that I see that comes up over and over and over again, and not just with the 4,000 people that I've helped, but also you know, on the you know, surrounding internet, on the global scale, uh, in Reddit or Stack Overflow or wherever you go, the same concerns come up. And I see it time and time again, and it's so frustrating because it can literally mean the difference between you succeeding in achieving your goal of potentially, you know, learning how to code or maybe even further uh, getting and starting a career or changing careers um, as a programmer. Okay, if you set out to get a job as a programmer, that's an important goal. That is life changing. It changed my life. It has changed the life of many uh, I'm sure hundreds of thousands of programmers out there, the quality of life, the salary, uh, the perks. I don't have to go into all the amazing benefits that come from being a coder. I'm sure you already know them, okay? And if you don't, take my word for it, they're incredible, okay? This is life-changing stuff. But in the 4,000 people that I've taught, there is one common thread that spans all of those people that leads to their eventual success or their failure. Would you like me to talk about that today? Would you like me to share with you that, share that with you today, okay? So, it might sound cheesy, it might sound obvious, but there's a lot behind what I'm about to say. All right, so stick with me. The thing that differentiates those who succeed from those who fail are simply those who raise their hands and say, I must not be cut out for this. I must be too stupid. Everyone else seems like they're so much further along than I am. Therefore, I must not be cut out for this. I quit. Okay, does that sound like something that's going on in your head? Does that sound like something you've even said out loud to a friend, a colleague, a, a co, you know, worker, I don't know. If you have these thoughts in your head, first of all, understand every single coder has these thoughts. Every single coder. I've had these thoughts. Anyone that I've taught has had these thoughts. Anyone that anyone else has taught, anyone who's self-taught, anyone who's gone through university, anyone who has, you know, gone through a boot camp, or, they all have these thoughts, okay? Unless you are part of the 0.1% of the population who are just naturally, truly geniuses, fine. But forget about those people. You're probably not one of those people. I'm not one of those people. We are normal people here. Okay, so if you have these thoughts that everyone else is smarter than me, I must not be cut out for this. I can't figure this out. This is too frustrating. The easiest path is to quit. Okay. Obviously, I don't want you to do that. Obviously, it's harder to not quit and to keep going. So there are sort of five things underlying this sort of poisonous mindset because it really does come down to your mindset that is going to differentiate between your success and your failure when it comes to achieving your goal of wanting to get a job or just becoming uh, a, a regular old programmer, you know, whether that be to get paid for it or whether that be just for a hobby, okay? There are five things underlying this. The first thing is that you need to sort of cut out all the, you know, BS that surrounds your life right now that is feeding that kind of mindset. Do you have people in your life that are saying, oh, learning how to program, who do you think you are? Some kind of genius? Okay, or if you have, you know, you don't have the support of your of your partner, your your husband, your wife, your sister, your brother, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your whatever. If they are trying to take you down a notch, realize that. Understand that that's going to feed this poisonous mindset. Okay, and that's for any endeavor. Okay, that goes for learning anything new. If someone, it's strange how some people will try to pull others down. And really that's a problem with them, right? That's their problem. That's their baggage that they are dealing with. That is the BS that surrounds them and their life, okay? You are trying to make a positive change in your life. So just understand that that might surround you and understand that you just need to ignore it. It's difficult to ignore it, but this is one of the keys to pushing forward, okay? 
The next is that you have to believe that what you get out of life is what you put into it. Okay, this kind of goes hand in hand with number one here. Okay, if you continue to do everything that you've always done, you're going to continue to get everything that you have always gotten. I'll say that again. If you continue to do what you have always done, you're going to continue to get what you've always gotten. That was a realization, a change in a mindset that I had probably more than eight years ago now that made me realize, oh, if I want to be, if I want to change my situation, I need to change my situation. I need to change what it is that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, there's no excuses here. If you want to be different, act different. Okay, and again, this is kind of global. This is kind of generic advice that can be applied to any discipline. Okay, but in this case, you want to learn how to code, right? That's what's in front of you right now. That's why you're listening to me talking to you. This is important. Mindset matters. Learning how to code is extremely difficult. It can be done. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people have done it already. It can be done. English majors have done it. Okay, people with absolutely no degrees have done it. I'm sure at some point a janitor has done it, or someone who you may perceive as not capable of doing such a thing has done it. How, how did they do it? Mindset. Okay. Third is you need to understand, as part of number two, you get out of this what you put into this, right? If you, don't, if you continue to do what you've always done, you're going to continue to get what you always get. In other words, if you do not change how you invest in yourself, you're probably not going to see any different results. Right? You've probably purchased some courses before. Maybe you've only ever stuck to free tutorials on the internet when, with respect to learning how to code. You've only ever done free YouTube videos. You've only ever done free bo uh, podcasts. You've only ever read free blogs. Free, 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 free. That's all you've ever tried because, God forbid, you spend one dollar on yourself. Okay, It's this poisonous mindset of, oh, I'm not worth one dollar. I'm not worth ten dollars. Right? When you say, oh, this course isn't worth ten dollars. It is. It's probably worth 10 times that or maybe 100 times that or even 100,000 times more than that if that one course is what gets you off your butt and gets you learning how to code and gets you to cross the finish line and secure a career as a programmer. How much is a career as a programmer worth to you? Think about that. How much are you making right now compared to the average salary that spans, you know, a 30-year period um, that you can have as a, you know, a career as a programmer, right? The average programmer, once you get past five years, is definitely making six figures, okay? You're making 100000 120000 140000 okay? Probably even more as you go further in your career, depending on where you live, right? Obviously, geography changes everything. But on average, you know, you're thinking, let's say 10 plus years, you're, you're hitting 140000 or more on average as a programmer. How much more is that compared to what you're making now? Multiply that by 30 years, okay? If you're making $50,000 right now in your job, which is a great salary, I'm not putting that down, but if you're making $50,000, let's say $60,000, and after, you know, 5, 10 years, you can be making $120,000. That's $60,000 more than you're currently making now that you can multiply out by 30 years of your career. What's $60,000 times 30 years, right? What is that actually? 30, 6, 600,000, that's $1.8 million, one course, one $10 course could be worth to you $1.8 million. Obviously, this is a little bit hyperbolic. This is a little bit, you know, exaggerated here. But I hope, hopefully you get my point. Don't discount the investment that you can make in yourself. Okay, but how if you've only ever purchased $10 courses and you are still here, you're still watching this video, you're still not employed, you still don't have a job, you still don't understand how to code, you still think you're dumber than anyone else in the room, $10 courses are not working for you. That's hard to hear. That's hard to take in. That's It's easy to just click and go away. I'm bored with this video. I'm bored with this guy talking to me. I, I don't like this guy. He's making me uncomfortable. If you continue to do what you've always done, you're going to continue to get what you've always gotten. Maybe a $10 course is not enough. Maybe you need to invest more in yourself. Maybe you're worth more. Maybe you are worth more than $10. Okay? Powerful stuff. Mindset. This stuff matters. This stuff surrounds everything 
in our lives, not just learning how to code. Hopefully you can take more away from this than just the learning how to code lesson. So number four, we've done three so far. Number four is this fear of success. Okay. And I want to talk about fear of success. Um, maybe a little bit deeper than you might hear on the internet. Okay. This is a legitimate thing. You can absolutely be scared of succeeding. And that fear of succeeding, the fear of getting the job, will hold you back and will, will give you permission, like this, you know, back in your mind permission to quit, to say, no, I'm too afraid of this. But it's actually, I want to tweak that a little bit. It's not, from, from my experience, I've never been afraid of succeeding. Success is what we all want, so how can we be afraid of it, right? Fear of success, I believe, is more fear of the responsibility that will come from that success. So it's fear of, what if I get into my first day of the job and I, I am, I have this imposter syndrome, right? You might have heard this co concept of imposter syndrome before, uh, with, with coders, uh, specifically it exists everywhere, but, um, this imposter syndrome as a coder, you look around, you look at your peers. And again, you have that, that poisonous mindset of, Oh, everyone else is smarter than me. I'm at the bottom of the food chain here and I'm not in the right place. This makes me too uncomfortable, right? It's the fear of the responsibility of having to show up and do your job and, and, and the fear of doing something wrong such that you might lose that job, right? It's fear of losing the success. It's fear of, of, of well, it's fear of success is what it's called. So just know that you're really probably just scared of the responsibility that comes from this success. But that's kind of a silly thing to be afraid of because everyone's at the same point. I was at the same point too. When I got my first job, I was brand new too. I made tons of mistakes. The only way that you can get ahead in a programming career is to make so many mistakes that you've made them all before and you hopefully will learn from those mistakes and never make them again. How I am so good as a programmer, as I'm teaching my students and they I blow their minds because they show me this error that they're getting, and they say, Trevor, I'm getting this strange error. I've spent two days on it. I've lost sleep. I don't know what to do. I say, well, send me your code. They send me their code within 30 seconds. I have it figured out. And they're like, how did you do that? How can you figure it out in 30 seconds? How can you be that good? My response is always, I've made that mistake before. I've seen that problem before. I've handled this problem a hundred times before. Okay. For you, this is just your first time seeing it. For me, it's my 100th time because I put in the reps, right? I've done the repetitions. I've been doing this every day. I'm just further along in the timeline than you are. Okay. It doesn't mean I'm smarter than you are. I've just put in more hours of work than you have. Okay. So you can't compare yourself to your peers because your peers have hundreds, if not thousands more hours, if not tens of thousands more hours of practice than you do. If you had 20,000 hours of practice, maybe like I have, you, you'd probably be just as good as me, if not better than me, right? Because I didn't have a good teacher when I first got started as a programmer. So you're probably already miles ahead of where I was, okay? And a lot of people don't realize that. So, number five. Hopefully you've gotten a lot out of this, but number five. You need to lower or you raise your performance to match sort of the expectations and performance of your reference group. Now, that's... that's it's wordy. I had to like sit there and read that one out. You have to lower or raise your performance to match it. So what happens is you will naturally um, become as good, if you will, as the people who you surround yourself with. The other way to look at this is who, did, who are the five people that you spend the most time with? Because you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. Okay, so think about your friends. Think about who, who do you hang out with um, on a regular basis? Okay, who you spend the most time with? Probably your spouse, okay, or your girlfriend, your partner, your whatever, right? You probably spend your most most of your time with them. Fair enough, that's that's one. But who else do you spend the most time with? How successful are your friends? If you hang out with four people who are all multimillionaires, the chances that you are a multimillionaire skyrockets. Okay, so this kind of ties into back to number one, which is where you need to be aware of who you surround yourself with. You need to be aware of the inputs that are coming in from the outside world and the people who are saying things and putting thoughts in your head. Okay, are the people saying negative things and saying, who do you think you are trying to learn how to code? Do you think you're Einstein? If that's the input that you're receiving, 
Okay, like I said, number one, you got to maybe consider changing those people. It's hard, but again, maybe only four more people that you need to take into your community, your group, your closest peers, the people who you spend the most time with. And if those four other people are people who are very supportive, who are on the same journey as you are, who are trying to achieve the same thing that you are, your chances of success skyrocket. So what communities can you join? What um, programming group circle, what hackathon, what boot camp, what community can you surround yourself with, with people who are both like-minded and have a positive outlook on you and your future as well as them and their future? If I'm passionate about coding, if I love coding and I'm helping you and hanging out with you on a regular basis, do you think that that might have a positive effect, a positive uh, you know, outlook on your future and your potential success? Hopefully you understand the power that goes behind that. Okay, now this has been a long video, it's been a bit ranty, but again, this comes from 4,000 plus data points that I've had when it comes to teaching people how to code. My goal and my mission in my business is to create great coders, because there is a huge lack of great coders out there. My mission is to make you guys great. My mission is to make you great. If you're fired up and you're still watching this, we could be friends, <laughs> okay? So... I just wanted to share that message with you. If this, if this video has got you fired up, reply to the email that I sent to you that had this link in it. Just say I'm fired up or I'm excited or whatever. Just email and say, hey, my name is, you know, XYZ. My name is James. My name is Tony. My name is whatever. Uh, just let me know who you are and that you're fired up and that this has given you, hopefully, some hope. Hopefully, this has changed your outlook, made you realize something. Share with me what that was because I want to know. I want to know you. And I want to help you in any way that I can. And I want to turn you into a great programmer too. Sound good? All right. Until next time, take care of yourself. Happy learning. And bye for now.